This is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Trading with a response to a question I received about text boxes. Lindsay asks, is there an ideal text box configuration? So no margins, margins, is one of these options generally better than the other? And we'll talk about these different options you can apply to your text boxes and or your shapes. And then she asks, is it better to have a single text box, so one text box that contains a heading, body text bullets, or is it better to have individual text boxes for each of the components that are on your slide. So in this video, we're going to look at the differences between shapes, text boxes, and placeholders, and how to set the default formatting for your shapes and text boxes to help speed up everything you do in PowerPoint and help get you to happy hour. But first, if you want to support the channel and learn everything there is to know about PowerPoint, check out our PowerPoint Pro membership in the description box below. And let's start by talking about PowerPoint placeholders and how these are different than text boxes and shapes. Now, a PowerPoint placeholder in PowerPoint is anything that says click to add title, click to add text, or has one of these icons down below, insert table, insert chart, insert smart art graphic, et cetera. Now, your placeholders don't have to be in this title and content layout. They could be, if I come up to the layout tab, they could be in some kind of comparison columns with some extra subtitles. They could be in a slide with just a title only. This really depends on how someone has set up your slide master. More often than not, they'll be some kind, in some kind of title and content placeholder. The key difference to keep in mind, and a lot of people forget this, is that the content placeholders are not inserted and formatted here in the normal view of your presentation. Instead, they're formatted and edited in the slide master view, which you can see if you come to the view tab and you come and click slide master, you're going to jump to the backbones or behind the scenes of your entire PowerPoint presentation. Now, we don't have time to go into all of the nuances of this, but as just a quick heads up, you have your parent slide, the larger slide here on the left. This is where you want to apply most of the master level formatting to your presentation. And the smaller individual slides are called child slide layouts where you edit or, or format the individual layout that you want to apply to just those specific slides that use that layout. Here on the parent slide, you can see this in action. If you just click the master layout icon in the slide master tab, here's where you set your titles, your text, your date, slide numbers, footers, etc. Whereas if I come down to notice the insert placeholder is grayed out here on the parent slide. If I come to the child slide layouts, I don't have those master layout options, those global options. I can choose to inherit the titles and footers, etc. But I do have the option to insert a placeholder. So you can insert kind of a default generic placeholder, text placeholder, picture placeholder, etc. So this is where you want to format and edit the global placeholders for your presentation. If you want to see a great video series on that, on how to create a PowerPoint template, check out Camille's video that I'll link up here in the upper right hand corner that we have here on YouTube. So that is a PowerPoint placeholder. Now let's talk about shapes versus text boxes as I hit shift F5 and go to full screen. Now here on the next slide, I want to quickly point out what are the main differences between a text box and a shape at a formatting level. A default text box will always start with a vertical alignment at the top. A shape will always start at the middle, not the end of the world either way. The big thing is a default text box will always start with resize shape to fit text and a shape will always start with do not auto fit. I hate this resize shape to fit text and recommend that you always use this do not auto fit for both your text boxes and your shapes. And let me just hit escape to come into PowerPoint and show you why. So if I come to the insert tab, I open the shape drop down, and I come and just grab a basic text box. Even if I draw it here on my slide, if I start to type text, notice that the text box is collapsed to the text. This might seem like an okay thing to you, but as you're building your presentations, if I just type equals rand one comma enter, all right, you normally don't want your text boxes or shapes to be constantly resizing themselves like this to fit your layout based on how much text someone has set. So that's why I always recommend setting this do not auto fit, which you can do simply by, I'll come back into PowerPoint. If you right click your shape or text box, you come to format shape. You want to come and find the text box options or the size and properties options. Come and find right the text box. Here's where you can find all of those options. So I want this to be do not auto fit for margins. I always like to have a 0.1 margin. So top, bottom, left, right? So that kind of creates a square and I never unselect this wrap text in shape. Watch what happens if I unselect this. This is what happens. Your text box will basically run across your slide. So I always keep, I'm just gonna hit control Z to undo so it resizes itself. 
I always keep this wrap text in shape. Now, although you can set these at an individual level for each of your objects, you can also, which I'm gonna show you how to do, which will save you a ton of time, set all of this up as the default formatting for your shapes and for your text boxes. So let's quickly look at that. What is default formatting for your shapes, lines, and text boxes, and what are some recommendations I have? If I come here into PowerPoint, this is currently the default text box for this template, the default shape, and I've left the text alignment exactly where it is, and the default line. So th if this is your PowerPoint presentation and you wanna change these, I'm gonna control shift drag to the right. The very first thing you wanna do is set your desired formatting. So in this case, let's say I want Arial, or I'll just, yeah, Arial. I'll make this size 28, all right? So it gets big. I'm going to shape format. I'm going to add a gray shape fill. I'm just gonna add a black outline. And here you really wanna go the full distance. Put all of the shape formatting that you want on your shape. I'm gonna right click. I'll click size and position. Size and position. Here I'm going to leave the size as it is. I'm gonna say do not auto fit. And I'm gonna put these margins on it like that. I'm also going to change this to middle alignment like that. For my shape, let me just quickly change this. I'm just gonna use a quick style. I'm going to Alt H A T M for middle line. I'm gonna use some shortcuts to speed this up. I'm also going to, let's see, let's change the outline, all right? So here I have a text box and a shape. I'll do my line in just a second because I have something else to show you. All you need to do to get a default formatting is right click the text box, select set as default text box. Right click the shape, set set as default shape. Once you've done that, if I now come to the insert tab and I come to the shape drop down and I grab a text box, notice that as I draw this text box in, I get the brand new text box. I'll just type my name, Taylor, and there you can see all of the formatting adjustments are set for that text box and it's set to do not auto fit. If I go and grab a shape, insert, shape, I set this for a rectangle, but all of these shapes are the same. So even if I grab, I'll even just grab this arrow chevron, draw it on my slide, it's gonna have all of that shape formatting, shape formatting that I set for my default um, formatting. And I'll talk about when this works and a couple of questions people have about it. Now, the one thing I wanna make the point for a line, so to PowerPoint, a text box, a shape, and a line are 100% different objects, so you have to set the default formatting for each. When you're setting the formatting for your line, I recommend shape outline, you set your shape outline color, you set your shape outline weight, you can add a shape outline dash if you want to, most times you don't want a dash, you want a straight line, but what you don't wanna do is to set shape outline an arrowhead on your line. If you set an arrowhead on your line and set that as your default formatting, that arrowhead will show up on everybody's line and it's super confusing. Watch, watch. I'll do this demonstration for you just so you can see. So if I add this double arrowhead, right, I right click, I select set as default line. If I now go into the insert tab, the shape drop down, and I grab a line that does not have an arrowhead and I holding shift, draw it on my slide, notice that those arrowheads come in. So even though on this insert shapes drop down box, it looks like there's a uh, single arrow headed line, there's a double arrow headed line, and there's a line with no arrows. These are actually all the same exact line with just a different formatting um, set to it. So whenever you are setting default lines for your presentation, I recommend shape format, shape outline, taking away the arrow heads, right clicking it, then setting set as default line so that one more time, insert shapes. If someone draws a line and I'll hold shift to force draw a straight line on my slide, you won't get those arrowheads because that's super confusing for people. Now, a couple of questions that people have about default formatting are what I call the three stallions of default formatting. Your default formatting is only applied to new objects you insert into your presentation. So if you're building your presentation like this, and then on this object, right, you set this as your default formatting, these previous objects you inserted and set will have no effect based on your new formatting. But any object you insert after the fact, it's a shape, line, or text box, 
will have your new default formatting. So old existing content will not be affected by setting new default formatting. The second thing to remember is that your defaults formatting only applies to your current presentation. So again, if you set the default formatting in this presentation and you have a couple of old presentations on your, on your computer, all right, these will not be affected by setting the default formatting for this, I'll just type this, presentation. The only way that this format is gonna carry from your current presentation to future presentations is if you duplicate this presentation, or if this is a .potx file, which is a PowerPoint template file, and people are using this to create their presentations from. In that case, all right, the defaults for your current presentation will carry over to either the new templates that are built off of the presentation, or if you copy and paste or duplicate the existing presentation. The third thing to keep in mind is you can change your default formatting at any time. I highly encourage you as you're building out Imagine if you had three different sections of your presentation. If this section of your presentation has a whole bunch of slides, go ahead and set the default formatting that's gonna match this section of your presentation. As you move to section number two, if this has different formatting that you wanna use, go ahead and reset new default lines, shapes, text boxes for this section of your presentation. So leverage this default formatting to quickly and rapidly set up or format the different aspects of your presentation to help get you to happy hour. Now, if it comes to tables and charts, as far as setting default formatting, you can check out my other video here on YouTube where I talk about moving from Excel to PowerPoint and some of the default formatting you can set for those um, object classes, which are a little bit different than shapes, lines, and text boxes. Now to Lindsay's last question about a single text box that contains text or should you use individual text boxes or shapes, because remember a shape and a text box is basically the same thing in PowerPoint, it's just a little bit of formatting difference. You know, what would I recommend? I just quickly pulled this together. It really depends on what you think looks best. So this is a shape or a text box, could be either one. I'm basically using a different, I'm using a caps lock, a different font for the title and then I'm having kind of a hanging constant in here. Now I personally, there's nothing wrong with this. This is totally fine if this works for your presentation. I normally like to use a, a text box or a shape as a title and a different colored shape or text box as the content so that I can rotate it on the left, I can rotate it on the right, etc. instead of trying to cram everything in like this. And if you use your default formatting, all right, if I just come in here to PowerPoint, hit escape, discard. If I come in here to PowerPoint, if I set, right, if this is a text box and this is a shape, if I right click, well, let me just, let's get a shape in here. I have a text box here on my Quick Access toolbar. I have a shape on my Quick Access toolbar. So if this is my title formatting, I'm just going to Control Shift C to copy it, Control Shift V to paste it here onto my text box. So I'm gonna right click, select set as default text box. If this is the content, control shift C, control shift V. If this is my shape, right click. If you set this up properly, so now I have my text box set as my title and I have my shape set as my content. If I now go and insert a text box, it's going to be my title. And if I come and set um, the shape, it's going to be my content placeholder. So if I type, equals rand one comma one like that. All right, I'm gonna to start to get, you know, number two, number three, number four, etc. Now it looks like for this text box, I missed, I noticed that it resized itself. So size and position, let's see, text box should be, do not auto fit. Let's just make sure, right click, set as default text box, text box, type Taylor, there we go. I saw when I, inserted this over here, it kind of resized itself, which made, made me think that I had missed that. So that is how I would use um, shapes and text boxes and default formatting. Setting one, my text box is the, is the title, setting a shape as the content placeholder, or you could stack it up inside of one. I personally prefer, um, Lindsay, going with um, one for each, because I think it gives you a lot more design elements you can work with. 
So that is my deep dive into text boxes versus shape versus content placeholders, and most importantly, how to set the default formatting for your shapes, lines, and text boxes. Now I'm curious to know what you think. Do you prefer to use text boxes or shapes or content placeholders as you build and edit your PowerPoint slides? And again, if you wanna support the channel and learn everything there is to know about PowerPoint, check out our PowerPoint Pro membership in the description box below. This is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and I'll see you at happy hour.